Good afternoon, everybody. We'll start with the press conference with a statement by the Prime Minister. Yes, good afternoon. Uh, I just had a very productive meeting with Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg about the challenges facing NATO. Uh, one of the most serious is the deteriorating security situation to the east and south of the treaty area. Not only due to traditional threats, but also as a result of rising hybrid and cyber threats. NATO must respond in an effective and timely manner by fulfilling its three essential core tasks. Collective defense, crisis management and cooperative security. Of course, we also spoke about our allies' response to the serious violation of international law in Duma. That response was well considered, proportional and, in the Netherlands' view, understandable. Efforts should now be focused on achieving a ceasefire, allowing access for humanitarian aid workers and starting peace talks through the UN. Another item was the further enhancement of the NATO alliance. NATO is a strong body that is capable of adapting to evolving threats. We made sound agreements at the summit in Wales and Warsaw, and also in recent years, important steps have been taken. NATO's four multinational battle groups in the Baltic countries and Poland are fully operational, and the Netherlands is a major contributor to them. At the Wales, Wales summit, the member states agreed to move towards increasing their defence spending to 2% of GDP. The Netherlands also undertook this commitment. We are investing heavily in defence. Under the current budget, spending will increase by up to 1.5 billion euros a year, and that amounts to an extra 5 billion euros during the current government's term in office. But it will not take us to the 2% target. It is, the, uh, at the same time, a major step forward. As a loyal ally, the Netherlands shoulders its responsibility when it comes to contributing to missions. We contribute to the Very High Readiness Joint Task Force, and we are active in Afghanistan. All these efforts remain necessary, especially given the current threat in the East and the South. The global security situation is fragile and in flux. Against that background, NATO alliance is as relevant as ever. And in that spirit, I look forward to the summit in Brussels on the 11th and 12th of July under the leadership of Jens Stoltenberg. Jens, again, thank you for visiting and I'm please, if you would be so kind to address us. Thank you so much, uh, Prime Minister Rutte. There, Mark, it's great to be back in Den Haag and it's always uh, great to meet you. And we just finished uh, uh, good discussions on a wide range of different issues. But let me start by thanking you and the Netherlands for the many contributions you are making to our shared security and to our collective uh, defense. More than 250 Dutch soldiers uh, are part of the NATO battle group in Lithuania. And next year, uh, you will, together with Germany and Norway, lead our very high readiness joint task force. We also welcome the many contributions you are making uh, to help NATO project stability beyond our borders, uh, not least in Afghanistan, where you continue to support our train, advice uh, and assist uh, uh, mission. Thank you also very much for what you do in Iraq, where Dutch uh, instructors have helped to train Iraqi forces, help them to stabilize their own country and to fight uh, uh, Daesh. I would also like to commend you for uh, the strong focus that uh, the, Netherlands, uh, the Netherlands always have had on uh, issues related to how our alliance is working on transparency, the effectiveness and accountability of the alliance. And uh, last but not least, I would like to mention the strong support of your government to stronger NATO-EU cooperation, an area where we have made a lot of progress over the last uh, years. Today we discussed how the alliance um, shall continue to adapt to a more demanding security environment. With a more assertive Russia, but also to all the turmoil and violence we see to the south of the alliance. 
And the strength of NATO is that we have been able to change when the world is changing. And, our, uh, and at our summit in July, we will make decisions uh, that uh, uh, make sure that uh, NATO continues to adapt uh, when the world is uh, changing. That's about uh, strengthening our collective defense and deterrence. It's about projecting stability on our borders. And it's about further uh, strengthening. We are facing the biggest security challenges in a generation. We have to keep our nation safe, and that means investing in our defense. I welcome that the Netherlands is investing in high-end capabilities, such as F-35 aircraft, as well as new warships uh, and submarines. At the NATO summit uh, in 2014, all allies agreed to stop the cuts, gradually increase, and move towards spending 2% of GDP on defense. The Netherlands is increasing defense spending, but it is necessary to do more. There is a clear expectation that all allies should reach the 2% uh, target. This is about the credibility of our alliance, and it is about a uh, fair burden sharing between uh, allies. As you mentioned, we also discussed uh, Syria. Uh, we cannot uh, accept the normalization of the use of chemical weapons. We condemn their use, and we must do everything we can to ensure that the international ban on chemical weapons is uh, upheld, not uh, undermined. NATO has expressed its um, support for the actions carried out by three NATO allies, uh, the United States, the United Kingdom, and France, uh, in response to the use of chemical weapons and NATO strongly uh, supports the efforts by the United Nations to achieve a lasting political solution to the conflict in Syria. So once again, thank you so much for hosting me, and thank you for your strong personal commitment to the Alliance. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank for the first uh, question, Fons Lambi, RTL. Uh, Mr. Secretary General, Prime Minister, um, about the defense spending, Mr. Secretary General, what is your appeal to the Netherlands, to Prime Minister Rutte? And did you get uh, the promise, a promise from the from Prime Minister Rutte that the Netherlands will reach the two percent defence spending within a few years? And when do you expect the Netherlands to reach the two percent? I expect all allies uh, to make good on the promises we all made uh, back in 2014, and that was uh, uh, to stop the cuts, increase defence spending, and then uh, move towards spending two percent of GDP on defense uh, within a decade. And this goal is important uh, because uh, when tensions are increasing, we have to invest more in our uh, security. And uh, uh, the Netherlands is an important ally. Uh, and therefore, it is uh, of particular importance that the Netherlands also delivers on the capabilities uh, that we need from, uh, Netherland, from the Netherlands uh, to strengthen our collective defense and our shared uh, security. Uh, we are aware of that the economy is growing in the Netherlands. Uh, but that's a good thing, uh, because uh, when we say that 2% should be allocated to defense spending, then it means that 98% can be allocated to something else. So economic growth is not the problem, that is actually a big advantage. Uh, increasing uh, tax revenues and also strengthening the economy and the fiscal balance, which enables uh, the Netherlands and other countries uh, to spend more uh, on defense. Let me also add that we are, we. We call for more defense spending, not to please the United States, but at the same, because we call for more defense spending because it's in our own uh, security interest to invest more in defense. Having said that, uh, increased defense spending across Europe is also about burden sharing. The GDP of the United States is as big as the GDP of uh, uh, European NATO allies combined. Uh, but at the same time, the United St States uh, invest uh, uh, around or is, is responsible for more than 70% of the total defense spending uh, uh, in uh, the alliance. So uh, this just underlines that we need a fair burden sharing within the alliance. Wise words. Yeah. Thank you, Jan. Thank you. Yeah. For the next question, Reuters, Mr. Meyer. 
Yes, good afternoon. Thank you for your time. Um, on the threat uh, from Russia, um, Mr. Secretary General, do you think that uh, NATO should take, take more steps to uh, enhance uh, air security in the Baltics? And do you think that the United States should deploy troops unilaterally more regularly? So what we have seen over the last couple of years is that uh, NATO has increased its military presence in the Baltic region with air policing, uh, with uh, more maritime presence, and also with uh, more land forces. Uh, currently, we're not uh, planning to increase our military presence in the region, but what we are planning is to strengthen our ability to reinforce if needed. Uh, we have already uh, four battle groups uh, in the three Baltic countries and uh, Poland. Uh, uh, the Netherlands is uh, part of the battle group in Lithuania. Uh, we have air policing and we have more naval presence. But if there is a need, we need to have ready forces uh, which can deploy very quickly. And that's also one of the reasons why uh, one of the main issues at the upcoming summit in July will be increased readiness, which also includes military mobility, the ability to move forces across Europe quickly if needed. And there the Netherlands, uh, the Netherlands is in a, a lead position uh, leading uh, the work we are doing uh, to work together with the European Union to address military mobility, how we can have the infrastructure, the legal framework, all the procedures in, in place to be able to quickly reinforce uh, if needed. This is also a very practical example of where the EU and NATO work together, um, uh, building on each other's capabilities and, and strengths. And we need to get this military mobility uh, thing uh, solved. Uh, this has to do with the legal parts, it also has to do with the hard infrastructure, it has to do with the command and control structure. So this is something where we are working very hard on together and I'm, I'm very happy that the Netherlands is taking a lead in this. For ANP, Robert Bloemen. Yes, thank you. Uh, Mr. Stoltenberg, I'm here. <laughs> did you discuss or did you ask uh, the Netherlands for new contributions or extra contributions for NATO missions? And Mr. Rutte, what did you answer, if so? Well, we discussed uh, uh, different missions and operations and in general I always ask Netherlands to do more because what they contribute is such high quality and, uh, and they are so well trained and well equipped uh, when the Netherlands uh, deploy forces, so we would like Netherlands to contribute more in many different uh, operations and missions. But we in particular discussed uh, Iraq, where we now are uh, in the process of planning a new training mission in Iraq. And I would very much like to see uh, more uh, Dutch trainers in Iraq. Because I strongly believe that one of the best weapons we have in the fight against terrorism is to train local forces. Of course, NATO has to be able to deploy uh, combat troops in combat operations, as we have done before. But in the long run, it's better to uh, enable local forces to stabilize their own country and to fight terrorism themselves. That's the reason why we have ended the combat operation in Afghanistan. Now we train the Afghans so they can stabilize their own country. That's exactly the reason why we also do have to do more training in Iraq to make sure that uh, ISIS doesn't come back, uh, but that the Iraqi forces can uh, make sure that they are able to stabilize Iraq. We need to train them. NATO will launch a training mission there, and I would very much welcome uh, Dutch uh, trainers as part of that uh, training mission in Iraq. Well, in, in answer to your question, first of all, we constantly review our contribution to the various missions, be it within NATO or within uh, the UN, like in Mali. Uh, and we have set dates when we have to decide on the next steps to be taken. So that is a continuous process. Uh, we very much support uh, the idea of NATO getting involved in training in Iraq for exactly the reasons the Secretary General was just mentioning. What then our contribution potentially could be uh, to such a training mission has to be decided. So that is in the process of being decided. Uh, at the same time, we are reviewing again our uh, support within the coalition uh, in Iraq, uh, including in uh, Erbil, and of course what we are doing in Afghanistan. So this is a continuous process, but politically we will fully support during the NATO uh, summit in July this concept of NATO getting involved in training in Iraq. We th do think that this will help Iraq to stabilize uh, the country. Politically there is more stability now in Iraq. Uh, they have been successful 
to a certain extent in fighting all the threats within the country, and we do believe that a training mission will uh, have a positive impact. What we will then, again, uh, uh, contribute to such a mission has to be decided. Last question for Ms. Vasileou from the Greek National Newspaper. Um, yeah, I would like to ask, um, in relation to the involving threats you mentioned also in the South, what is your position and what worries you most concerning the escalating tensions in the Aegean by Turkey, which has, have also led to, the, to Turkey holding two Greek uh, soldiers there? Both Turkey and Greece are two highly valued allies. They have been members of the alliance for many decades, and Turkey and Greece contribute to our missions and operations and to our collective defense in different ways, and we welcome that. Then there are some well-known differences between the two countries, and I just urge Turkey and Greece to address those differences in the spirit of good uh, neighborhood uh, and, and also uh, to address them um, in, uh, in bilateral meetings. And I also welcome the fact that the Prime, the Prime Minister of, uh, of Turkey and the Prime Minister of uh, Greece recently uh, spoke and addressed uh, these uh, issues. But uh, I don't think uh, it will be helpful if NATO starts to uh, go into the uh, specific uh, 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 issues which uh, cause some problems. That is for uh, Greece and Turkey to address. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We'll have a great afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.